like, would I be able to survive an apocalypse? apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> the social model is looking at the outside world and saying, you know, that the outside world isn't accessible for me. And then yeah. I just like <laughs> flash them and there like- There is Mona. And I like literally like just show them the bag. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am with the lovely Hannah Whitten. Hello. And I've also been on her channel. Go check it out. For you pause the video. <laughs> We've just talked about periods and blindness. So you need to go over and check that video out. But today we are discussing disability. What the word means to us, how we feel about it. Do we associate ourselves with the word disability? What is this phenomenon? <laughs> <laughs> um, so first I think I want to ask you Hannah, mm -hmm. if we were to put disability in a box sort of in the corner oh, okay. and we were just to look at it, just the word, yeah. what does it mean to you? Like just what are the words are associated with the word disability in your head? Oh, accessibility, wheelchair, I guess. Like it's just always something that will just like come to your head. The emoji. The, <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's, that, it's the like the the sign as well that's yeah. everywhere. It's always mm -hmm. someone in a wheelchair. Yeah. Although I think I've seen recently on like toilets and stuff, it kind of says like, not all disabilities are visible yeah. and, and Oh stuff. yeah, you said there was a TFL sign that said that, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you can order them. So for my viewers who don't know you, Hannah, mm. what is your condition and yeah. how do you title it? Yeah. yeah. So there's kind of like, there's two aspects of it. The first is I have a chronic illness which is ulcerative colitis, which is a form of inflammatory bowel disease. And then the other side of that is that earlier this year, I had to have surgery because um, I was having a severe flare up and I had my colon removed and I now have a stoma bag. And I don't really know what to call it. Cause I like, before um, I was diagnosed when I was seven. So I've had the chronic illness for most of my life but then between the ages of 15 and 25 I had no symptoms so I never really considered myself disabled like even having a chronic illness was like never at the forefront of my mind like I had to take pills every day like I was on a lot of medication but it wasn't like a, a thing that affected my daily life mm -hmm. and then this year it's just like whoo yeah. everything. I've not quite figured out like where I fit in the label of mm -hmm. disabled. Like I remember my nurse telling me that I'm allowed to use disabled toilets, but I'm not technically disabled by like the legal definition mm -hmm. of it in the UK. So I was just like, okay, I'm not disabled then. But this year I like have I felt, felt, I felt disabled mm -hmm. a bit this year, but more like from surgery recovery. Mm -hmm. So because I had open surgery and so turns out you need your core for so many things yeah. and so I was really weak and I like walked with a stick for a while because I needed that extra support whilst w walking but that's a temporary thing and like I'm getting my strength back and yeah. and I know that like I will be able to do everything that I used to be able to do again mm -hmm. but I just I go to the toilet differently. At the start of this year you had this this whirlwind and you felt so so ill and so mm. so disabled do you feel like because now you can look back on that and be like, well, I'm not in that state, so right, that must yeah, be yeah. disabled, what am I now? Do you feel like you're in conflict with yourself a bit or? Sometimes because I know that my condition and my situation has improved. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, I'm so much better now. I'm so much more able. Mm -hmm. Ugh, that's a bit icky. I know, I yeah. know what you mean. I've started running again. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like gradually building myself up to run a 5K again. Mm -hmm. When I look and see how far I've come, I'm like, oh wow, I'm so much better Further now. Yeah. But the stoma is something that I'll like, I'll now, like I'm never gonna get my colon back. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so that is like a permanent thing. Like yeah. my colon is, is gone, goodbye. Yeah. Um, And I guess there's like extra things that I have to think about and be aware of like, Where's the nearest toilet? Do I have enough um, supplies with me if I go away? Or like if I'm out and about, just in case I have any leaks, do I have a spare bag with me yeah. to be able to clean that up? Luckily so far, I've not had any leaks in public. That's something mm -hmm. that I am terrified of happening. It's like, imagine you just get poo on yourself in public. Yeah, do, I need to, do I need to bring like spare clothes with me everywhere? I yeah. haven't been doing that, but like, I'm just like, oh. and you got obviously you feel different now. Mm. You did a beautiful photo shoot, yeah. And obviously you've had this shift from. Do you feel the old Hannah and the new Hannah is? Do you feel there's a massive difference? Obviously there is enough to do a photo shoot and own your. I think I heard you say on one of your videos that you're owning back your body. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
how how do you feel now? Do you feel like it's a more of a projection to the outside world? Say, hey, this hasn't affected me, or is it more to do with yourself? And I think it was definitely more of like an internal thing. Yeah, because like this disease had taken absolute control over my body Mm -hmm. and this is something that we talked about in the video on my channel with Mm -hmm. your blindness of how like out of control you felt and like you just weren't in touch with your body at all Mm -hmm. like whilst I was ill and then in recovery from surgery I was like this vessel (laughs) and my body was like deciding what to do and it was like Mm -hmm. steering the ship and I was like okay I guess I'm along for this ride it's a really horrible ride I hate this ride like why do I have to be on this Mm -hmm. but you're like strapped in and your body's like ha 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 no 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 this is what we're doing now we'll be disabled yeah yeah and doing the photo shoot and also just like making videos about it and everything mm-hmm. has been part of my healing process and like part of me being like no I'm I'm in charge yeah. now you are Hannah yeah. Watson and you will do yeah <laughs> I totally agree yeah. that's how I sort of cope with it as well it's really important to to own what you have yeah. and what your body is as we were sort of discussing before we started this video I was saying about the social model of disability and yeah. the medical, medical which model is something of I only learnt about like this year Mm -hmm. like I learned about that like a few months ago and I was like oh wow mind blown it's crazy because obviously the medical model is more centered on yourself and sort of saying I am blind whereas the social model is looking at the outside world and saying you know that the outside world isn't accessible for me Mm -hmm. and I think that shift is really important. I, I know that in my journey, in order to accept myself, I move towards a more social model of looking mm-hmm. at it. And I think I do see myself as disabled because of the challenges that I have to face maybe with my guide dog and being refused with a few things. And is there any point in your day where you just feel like someone's going to judge you? And I know you mentioned with your walking stick, you felt having it under your arm was was maybe something <laughs> that... that people would be like why is she having that underneath her arm what is she doing you know it was there ever a confidence issue there I think with with the stick yes Mm -hmm. but I think because my condition is invisible I obviously like made it visible although people didn't know exactly what was wrong with me Mm -hmm. um when I needed the stick but yeah with the stick and like the holding under my arm because basically I would like I would if I knew I was going to be out for the whole day like maybe I wouldn't really need the stick so much in the morning but I knew that from being on my feet all day I'd be really relying on it Mm -hmm. towards the end of the day so I took it out with me and then if I like needed to do something like get my phone out or like my oyster card or whatever it was I knew that I could then use two hands, put the stick under my arm, and just keep walking. But I, I never did that because I was so afraid of like yeah. people looking at me and going, "Why she got a stick? She's walking fine. Like clearly she doesn't need it. Like mm-hmm. she's a fake disabled or like yeah, or something." Yeah. And then I'd be like, "So I would always like stop, hold the stick, get my phone out, do whatever it was I needed to do, put it back, and then mm-hmm. start walking again." And I was like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm wasting so much time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I could I yeah. could have been on the tube by now <laughs> yeah. what uh, am I doing yeah but that was yeah. definitely like out of fear of like what other people would think mm-hmm. and now I kind of sometimes get the same thing but no, so no one said anything to mm-hmm. me this is like literally all internal but mm-hmm. I do know some people who have stomas who actually have had people say stuff to them which is like right. when they like are waiting for or go into or see them coming out of a disabled toilet mm-hmm. and you know we look seemingly non-disabled and they're just like, how dare you? And also because like, because I'm young as well. And, and so that is like an added, do you have that as well? Yeah, I do. Because people are like, I'm, you're yeah. too young and pretty to be disabled. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. yeah, people come up to you and think that's okay. But obviously when I'm holding on to my fiance's arm, it's like, I haven't got a dog or a cane. They're like, mm-hmm. they look at me and Ollie's like, they're glaring at you. Yeah. <laughs> like, and we're going into a toilet. I was going to ask you, yeah, whether you'd had problems with that, but... um. So far, no, no one yeah. said anything, but it's definitely like in my head a bit. But I, I have a radar key. Do you, do you yeah. have a radar key? Yes, yeah. I do, yeah. So I like use that and I kind of feel like, you can't say anything to me because I have the key, yeah. like I'm allowed yeah. in here. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah, but do you yourself feel like you should justify it or you've just accepted it? So, yeah, sometimes, head. like, I go through these scenarios in my head, which is so ridiculous, of, like, if somebody challenges me on Mm -hmm. it, like, why are you here? Why are you using this toilet? Uh In my head, (laughs) I'm like, 
I'll fucking show you why. And then yeah. I just like flash them and <laughs> there like, is Moan. And I like literally like just show them the bag. Like yeah. that's what happens in my head. But obviously yeah. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because on principle, I know that like you don't have to justify yourself exactly. to anyone and you exactly. don't have to disclose anything because it's like a really personal thing. But yeah, in my head, that's that's the scenario that happens is I just like, you know, get out my stoma bag and be like, look. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. But never, I've never done that in public, so. So you wouldn't, so just to conclude then, you wouldn't define yourself with one word, chronic illness, disability, sort of, in yeah. where you feel now is just Hannah. It is just Hannah, but yeah. also, like, I do think that those labels are really important. They are. Because mm-hmm. people, like, reclaim them and, like, find them really empowering. So, and and also the other thing about having a chronic illness is that, effectively having my colon removed has actually removed my chronic illness yeah like I'm not on meds anymore Mm -hmm. so I'm like so I also have this weird battle of like do I have colitis now like I've had colitis since I was seven years old that's like been such a big part part of me and I'm like do I still have that Mm -hmm. I don't I'm like I'm no I don't know because that side of it so I'm like do I even have a chronic illness anymore I think what I call it is is like a condition yeah and then the word disability or disabled like I definitely have had a lot of moments this year especially in surgery recovery where Mm -hmm. I have identified with that but now not so much Mm -hmm. but also I know I'm different and so I would I would like to find a word for it and maybe that word is disabled yeah and I just need to but I definitely have the like I'm not disabled enough so I can't Mm. I can't use that word so I definitely have that as well don't you think it's a phenomenon though that what is disabled enough it's such a mind-boggling concept that because obviously like to me I mean I I feel disabled but obviously I hated that word when I first went blind Yeah, yeah I hated it because I was just like I hate this blindness, I hate what it's done to me, I don't accept it, and I'm not going to, I'm going to sit in bed and eat popcorn. (laughs) And I just won't be disabled and I refuse. But now I've sort of found the social model, I feel good about myself. Mm. As I was saying in your video, like, I've accepted that I deal with my period a certain way. Yeah. I've accepted, and once you chip off different things, I bet you feel like that now, like, you you have gone through such a traumatic thing, Mm. and now you're over it, you can look at it in perspective and be like... I deal with my life this way and yeah. no line's been drawn. It's just but... become so normal to me now. Like, mm-hmm. I can't even remember what it's like to poo. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, what is that feeling? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember. And it's yeah. not even been a year. Mm-hmm. And I definitely think I've adjusted really quickly to having, like having a stoma. Uh-huh. But, yeah, it doesn't make it any less weird. Oh, yeah. And, like... And would you describe it as hard? Because obviously you've still got yeah. the essentials to buy. You've got extra things to think about. And yeah. so some part, the way I think about a disability is anything extra on your life that you have to deal with that is a challenge yeah. that to everyday activities, you know, it is, yeah. a, is an issue. Not an issue, but, you know, <laughs> oh gosh, all the no, time I'll do So it. I had a conversation with my mum, like, a few months ago, I remember, and mm-hmm. I was trying to define disabled for me. Yeah. And the thing that I came up with Mm -hmm. uh, was if the apocalypse happened, right, there's a zombie apocalypse or just any other kind of apocalypse, and if you think about it, like, would I be able to survive, right? Right. And I'm like, well, as soon as I've run out of stoma bags, as soon as I've run out of my equipment, Mm -hmm. then I'm I'm pooing everywhere. And, you know, if my friends and family are trying to escape and they're running and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm... myself yeah, right now yeah, like, yeah. so so actually I'm like okay so maybe disability for me is like would I be able to survive an apocalypse because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like okay so if the apocalypse came my first point of call would be raid all of the hospitals and get as many stoma <laughs> bags bonus. as many yeah. stoma bags as possible <laughs> but then also like if you're trying to escape somewhere like something's happening and like you're running I'll be there with like a suitcase full of stoma yeah. bags <laughs> yeah. just like I can't believe yeah, these I can't, whereas yeah. I so I and I think of someone who is like fully able-bodied as someone who doesn't need any extra stuff doesn't Mm -hmm. have anything else to think about yeah and the apocalypse comes and they're like right let's go (laughs) and I'm like I can't do that (laughs) exactly so that's my definition I have no idea if that works for everyone because obviously all disabilities are are different and everyone um has even different experiences of the same disability yeah exactly Um, so if that doesn't work for you 
then that's fine. But that's that's kind of how I think of it in my you. head. So I think from this video, I think we've sort of <laughs> somehow come back around to saying, right, whatever you have justified in your own head yeah. is totally what works. Yeah. Because do we have to define? I mean, obviously dis- disability has a word, but for us, I think taking control of our own conditions mm-hmm. what's, is what makes us happy. Yeah. Just own it, owning it. Yeah. And... Yeah, I think both of us have said this at some point. It's just about us being in control. And mm-hmm. I think for me, like, naming my stoma as well, so her name is Mona, for me, that's, like, really empowering mm-hmm. because then she feels like a pet. Yeah. And I'm just like, like, if she makes a noise or, or something, I'm like, oh, that's just Mona. Yeah. Like, I love it because it's yeah. not the elephant in the room either. Mm. The way we discuss it, it makes us accept it in, in how we communicate to the world and we want people to know yeah so we're confident with it i think that's a really good place to end yeah. thank you so much for being on my channel oh thanks for having me yeah <laughs> thank you i really hope you enjoyed this video guys please go over to hannah if you don't know her i think you've been living under a rock <laughs> go and subscribe and i really do hope you enjoyed it don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you very soon bye bye bye